So here we go. It's game number one of the finals of the 2024 Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship. Ruben gets to go first here with his Ubel deck. We've seen him take the lead in several games at this point. And the Ubel deck is so strong at going first, it's almost unstoppable. Ruben carrying the hopes of Jose along with him is going to start this duel off. Matchup is draw or standby. Fiendsmith Snake Eye versus Fiendsmith Ubel. Ruben starts off with Samsar D Lotus. Enough to get the entire combo started on its own, but not nearly as powerful as opening something along the lines of opening the Spirit Gates. So just only an individual combo, but we're not stopping anything this far. Yep, since uh, RD Lotus is going to attribute itself to Special Summon Spirit of Ubel from the deck, on Summon Spirit of Ubel is going to let Ruben add or set a card that mentions Ubel, and yep, Nightmare Pain is the go to here. Nightmare Pain's being activated. Is there a, resp a response? There is no response from Mark. And we will destroy the U best way ever, uh, Spirit of Ubel. Going to resolve Nightmare Pain, adding the Gruesome Grave Squirmer. Spirit of Ubel's effect's going to activate when it's destroyed to special summon a Ubel from the deck to the field. Looking an awful lot like a semi-final match so far with no interaction from Mark. Let's see what Ruben's next move is going to be. It looks like he is going to reveal that Gruesome Grave Squirmer to try and special summon it. Opting to special summon, the, uh, or sorry, special summon and destroy the Ubel. Probably trying to find more materials to add to the graveyard so we can access Phantom Ubel from that extra deck. So we see Ubel the Terra Incarnate come down. Can I just double check Yep, Grave Swarmer does have a couple of really good effects. Being able to special summon and then destroy if you so choose. When it's in the graveyard, it's also going to be able to banish itself and special summon back a monster later on. I think Mark taking note of how many summons have been done at this point. So, performing a leak summon here, Ruben's going to send both his monsters to the graveyard to summon the link to Unchained Soul Lord of Gamma. That's going to let him add an unchained monster from his deck to his hand. It's only one choice, and it is Shivara. All right, and now he's going to return the two materials required to fusion summon Phantom of Ubel from the extra deck. Phantom Ubel is going to protect him from monster effects as it can change the monster effect to force, uh, to become just to destroy Ubel from the deck. Now, as I said, Gruesome Grave Scrum is going to banish itself from the graveyard to special summon back Spirit of Ubel. This is a great start here for Ruben. No responses from Mark up to this point. With the Phantom already on the field, it's going to be way more difficult to get anything through. All right, the Shavar is going to destroy Spirit of Ubel. While the on summon effect is once per turn, the effect when it is destroyed to special summon Ubel from the deck is not, or from the graveyard. Let's see, is he's just put some Ubel monsters back the deck. Might as well get him from there. There's also no once per turn on summoning the Phantom of Ubel. So the more monsters you get, the more Phantoms you can summon. All right, taking a moment to consider his next move carefully. Ruben's done this combo several times up to this point, so just has to go through the motions to try to consider what could happen from Mark's side. A Link Summon here, going to send both his monsters to the graveyard to summon Unchained Soul of Rage. Since Shavara was sent to the graveyard, it's going to let him set an Unchained Trap card from his deck. It's going to go for Abominable Chamber of the Unchained. Looks like Ruben is shuffling his deck thoroughly now, indicating that he is done with it for the turn. A little bit of a surprise. He's pretty well insulated right now. Has the Yama in the graveyard, has Unchained Soul of Rage, Phantom U Bell protecting him. He has not accessed the Fiendsmith part of his engine yet, so I'm surprised he's... Nope, doesn't look like he is going to get any Fiendsmith cards online, but during the end phase, the Samsara D Lotus is going to come back because U Bell will require something to be tributed during the end phase or it will go to the graveyard. Opting to still attribute the Ubel anyway. Let's take another look here at Lotus. It's a bit of a tricky card. Okay. Yeah, very rare to see this part of Lotus' effect be activated. Yeah, so a strong start, but missing that other half of the deck here for Ruben. So it's not going to have something like DDD, Highway King Caesar on the field. 
We'll see how Mark's going to pilot his snake eye strategy through this field. Now, he didn't interact at all during Ruben's turn, so you got to figure that his hand is full of ways to act instead. That could be the case here. Divine Temple of the Snake Eye, the first action here from Mark. <laughs> Picking up half the deck, not in the <laughs> top half. You know how much I <laughs> love that. What do you think the over-under on number of times that the card they're looking for was in the correct half of the deck? 100% of the time it's on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But Snake Eyes Diabell Stars can be placed in that spell and trap zone to be summoned later on. And the next up is Bonfire. Ruben has no response. Bonfire is going to let him add a level 4 or lower Pyro monster, and it's going to be that Snake Eyes Poplar. Poplar effect is activated in the hand. Special Summon itself is going to be able to activate on the field to add a Snake Eyes Poplar trap. Already has the Divine Temple, so he's probably going to be looking to access. Yep, here we go again. Bottom <laughs> out. <laughs> Original Sinful Spoils of the Snake Eyes. Now we know because the Unchained Solar Rage is on the field, you can go into Anima, into the zone that it points to. Could will be a good way to force out the Unchained Solar Rage potentially, but he could also hold off on it since he does have Abominable, but having the Solar Rage in the Spell and Trap Card Zone would be also... It was, ignore that Bonfire Colossus, it's actually supposed to be Bonfire. <laughs> So Soul of Rage, you have Gundu used right away here on Anima. More to note, a Poplar wasn't activated either. That's something key to note, holding off on the Poplar effect. That is. Mm -hmm. So Chain Link 1, Divine Temple to try and summon the Snake Eye Diabell Star. Chain Link 2, Ruben's SP Level 9 is going to banish the Snake Eye's Diabell Star from the Spell and Trap Zone. That's huge. Ruben taking advantage of how turn player priority works here to get the banish off in the way that he wants. But there is a normal summon of Snake Eye Oak. Snake Eye Oak will let him special summon back that Poplar from the graveyard. But Phantom of Bell might have something to say about it, or SP Little Knight's going to take that Snake Eye Oak off the field temporarily until the end phase, but that means it's going to be harder for Mark to access something like Snake Eye's Flame Burst Dragon from the deck without using his original Sinful Spoils. But even still, if he original Sinful Spoils, it's going to be harder to get a couple monsters on the field since he's already used Snake Eye's Poplar's effect from the hand. So Ruben's still got that fan of Hubel on the field, and we also saw that he's got quite a large number of cards in hand. Yeah, and oh. we've been holding that Ash Blossom for the original Symbol Spoil. That's a huge Ash Blossom and Joy String here from Ruben. I guess that makes a lot of sense. If he doesn't have the Fiendsmith cards, he probably has more points of interaction from his hand there to help uh, with the field that he was able to create in turn number one. Looks like it's just going to be a set for Mark. Wow. So Ruben able to stop Mark from going any further here in his turn. Mark, could you please straighten up your graveyard? Sure. Don't forget to switch your... Yeah. Tough start here for Mark. Yep, Mark choosing to end the main phase here, going into battle yeah, phase. Of course, to go to battle phase thanks to Nightmare Pain. Okay. So he's going to take 700 points of damage, reflected back at him. So Ruben gets to have another turn here. SP Little Knight resolves and summoning back the Oak as well as itself. Interesting positioning on Little Knight there. Activates the Abominable Chamber of the Unchained, special back. Oh, for the Yama that had not been used yet, getting back the Shervara. Things are looking really good here for Ruben in game number one. Wow, and he has the Beastial Jerusalem on top of it. If things didn't already look really good, they're getting even better. Ruben opting to go for a more of a half field just to really conserve his resources for the following turn because he needs to just do just enough to stop his opponent. And he had confidence with the cards in his hand that he had enough already. Ash Blossom proving critical there, holding it back until the very last moment to make sure that Mark couldn't get things going. Moved into the main phase.
first action here from Ruben is a Link Summon for Nightmare Phoenix, and that's going to be co-linked with SPL Knight. He'll oh so be able to discard a card to destroy a spell and trap card, and then draw a card. Discards the bigger U Bell. That's great to put in the graveyard because you can use it as a material if something happens to that Phantom of U Bell. It looks like it was just a bluff bonfire, but this Phoenix gets a lot of value of the draw, the effect of banishing the pop bar because of the, or not banishing, but sending it to the graveyard because of Druid Swarm. Thank you. Confidently in the driver's seat right now is Ruben. Doesn't want to make any silly mistakes at this point in the duel. Looks like he's going to make another Phantom of Ubel here. Returns the materials. Either he wants to protect himself more, or it's just giving him another monster on the field to use as a material to continue to link climb. He does have to watch out for maybe a pair of cards, even though Mark only has a pair of cards in hand that could disrupt him. Yeah, well, it could really only be afraid of effect failures or paired with something along the lines of Nibiru the Primal Being. If there was an infinite permanence, it would have been set to the field already. Exactly. So those Phantom Bells are really putting in a lot of work here. But he is going to send one to the graveyard to Special Summon Shavara from the hand. Oh, opting to enter the battle phase straight up. Another 900. Since Nightmare Pain reflects the damage back at Mark. It's going to be another 700 points of damage. Not, not going to be quite enough here. Because it's 19, 2000, and another 2000? Oh, actually. Yeah, it's 59. It's 59. All right. And Ruben takes game number one over Mark, and now just one game away from becoming the Yu Gi Oh! TCG slash OCG world champion. But you don't see a smile on his face. Still stoic, still fo focused. No. Game number two here at the Yu Gi Oh! World Championship 2024 in Seattle, Washington. Grand finals. So we have our check for Perulia here. It's not there. Oh, we get to finally fe see the Fiendsmith engine here. Marksville is going to be able to leave with the Fiendsmith engraver. I guarantee you the track is not in that top half. Of the <laughs> I knew that was coming. Just pick the whole thing up at once. It was actually the bottom card, so imagine how quick that would have been. But neither here nor there. Fiendsmith's track is in the hand here for Mark Schulte's engraver. We finally see in here the finals. Fiendsmith's track is going to let him add a light fiend from the deck to the hand. Then he's going to have to discard a card. It's usually going to be Fabled Lurie, but since he's adding engraver, that might well, be. He already has He already has Fabled Lurie in the hand. Since Fabled Lurie was discarded to the graveyard, it's going to special summon itself back to the field. Now, already having used Engraver from the hand, you might think that's pretty useless in the hand, but actually it's an additional Light Fiend that you can use for Track's Grave Effect. That's right, the Track Grave Effect only fuses from hand to field, while the Sequence one fuses from the graveyard. Requiem going to tribute itself, summon another copy of Engraver from the deck. The Requiem equips itself now, and there is the Wanted. The one cop of Wanted Seeker, the Sinful Spoils, coming down. Will there be a Day Ball Star in the top half of the deck? There will not. It's a fun little mini game, though. You remember uh, <laughs> Pegasus's Prophecy card, where you had to guess if the monster you're about to be summoned is above or below 2,000? <laughs> it's very similar. Kind of reminds me of that. Is it in the top or the bottom half of the deck? All right, Wanted, I'm sorry, the Bell Star is going to send the Requiem to Special Summon itself, using its effect, going to go ahead and set. Zero lessons learned. <laughs> it's only been three times this, this own, game. Own four in this match. <laughs> Sets the original Sinful Spoils. Going to link away both his monsters to Fiendsmith's sequence. Sequence going to be shuffling back the Fiendsmith Requiem as well as looks like one of the engravers, more likely the Lurie. Yep, going to commit to the Lurie here. To fusion summon the Fiendsmith Lacrima. Uh, Lacrima's Engraver's going to hit the field off of Lacrima's effect. All right, and now Ruben is been... picking up his cards, and he's got Nibiru, the primal being, and it's going to hit the earth. Yep, with the, all those monsters on the field, there was a chance he could go directly into Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess. Ruben, knowing that is an option, drops Nibiru, the primal being here. 
Mark not necessarily happy with this, but at least he hasn't used his original Sinful Spoil yet. He still has the effect of Lacrima to uh, hit for 1,200. Puts back one of those engravers. 68 to your pull. Yeah. Mark no longer has to worry about the Nibiru now that it's already resolved. He can use the effect of engraver in his graveyard. Oh, but there is a Druid Swarm as well! This could be huge. We see the Swarm's going to yeah. banish the engraver that's trying to come back from the graveyard. Despite their limited status, the Biss deals here have been huge all throughout the weekend, both in the TCT and in Master Duel. Deals huge here in the finals. A tribute summon for the wow. Fiendsmith Engraver that he added off the Fiendsmith track. He now needs a face-up card, so he's going to be able to use the effect sequence now and then send it with the original Sinful Spoils. Will there be a response from Ruben? Doesn't seem like it. Okay, the chances are pretty high he finds one in the top half this time. But... No? I regret it more <laughs> He's heading to the bottom half of the deck. For the one of Snake Eye Ash. Snake Eye Ash effect is going to let him add that Snake Eye's Poplar to the hand. Special summon itself to the field. Poplar going to be able to add likely the Divine Temple of the Snake Eye. He picked up the whole deck this time. I want to point that out. <laughs> now that it was right on top, perfect time. <laughs> Divine Temple of Snake Eyes is now in the hand for Mark Solis. He's still going to want to clear this board. He doesn't want Ruben to start his turn with two monsters on the field. Forced to use the Bell Star is now in the spell trap zone. Unfortunately, both effects of Sequence and Requiem have been used, so Engraver will not likely have anything to equip to itself to use its effect. So now we're going to be using Ash with the Diabell Star in order to... Seems like he's eyeing Snake Eyes Oak. Oak hits the field, targeting the Ash, special summon it back from the graveyard. So now Mark's only tools to really remove uh, Ruben's field efficiently, it will likely be that Spiel of Night, and because of that, he's going to be likely prioritizing the Druus Worm. So well, he also has a Flame Dragon. He could yeah. just potentially push back that Druus Worm. But then he wouldn't be able to set up anything for himself. Yeah. So it's, gonna be a tough, it's a tough call. Still has two cards in his hand. He would have two cards going to Ruben, drawing up to four. Yeah, it feels like he's got to have something on this end board, but we'll see what it is. Yeah, I mean, we know, talk about how strong these power, uh, cards in hand can be. All it takes is one card to do the full combo, so you need multiple points of interaction here to make sure that Ruben's plays are stymied enough. Stymied, good word. <laughs> <laughs> I took the SAT. <laughs> I will Flameberg. Yep, looks like the Flameberg is going to push the Jerusalem back into the spell and trap zone. Just straight back in there. I like these cards where the cards move back and forth between the rows. Yes, the yeah, the Centurion, motion. Mm -hmm. Valence, the Snake Eye cards. The motion feels really nice. It does. Like when you're playing it, it just feels good to push your cards forward so that they can attack. All right, now we're going to see a link summon here for Hida. There are no fire monsters in Ruben's graveyard, but just trying to get that Flame Burge into the graveyard so we can bring back a couple of level ones. It's going to be Snake Eye Oak and Snake Eye Spoplar. Still having to deal with the Nibiru at this point, but you are you do have the freedom to use SP Little Knight. But using it now means you don't have it for IP Masquerina later to get the additional value from the Banished on your opponent's turn. You still have its on field effect, of course, but just really minimizing the amount of full responses that you could have. Yep, definitely the next move is going to be a link summon here for Promethean Princess, Bestower of Flames. It's going to bestow flames to reignite Snake Eyes Flamebird's Dragon from the graveyard. And now what? Currently locked under fire monsters. No Desiree there to negate Promethean Princess, as we've seen many times. Oh, well, we did see this before from Marquis. Still plays the Raging Phoenix. I love Salaman, Greg, Raging Phoenix. It's a good Link 4 fire you can go into. It's also great at finishing games. Let's see if he's going to link it away for World Sea Dragon Atlantis here, or if he's just going to continue his progression of plays. That would be another way to actually remove this Nibiru without having to waste the IP, uh, sorry, the SP Little Knight. And it 
it does look like that is what Mark is considering. Uh, he, yep, he's going to use World Sea Dragon's Light. It's going to banish all monsters on the field and special summon them, them back. Mark gets to choose if they go face up, face down, all their positions. But since that Nibiru is special summoned, Ruben special summon a monster which will activate the effect of Promethean Princess to destroy the Snake Eyes Flamber's Dragon and the Nibiru, the Primal J being. Now he can use the Raging Phoenix just to put another monster on the field. Looks like he is going to do just that. Since a fire monster was destroyed, the Salman, Get Salman Great Raging Phoenix special summons back from the graveyard and gains the attack of the monster destroyed. But chances are it'll be used as a link material here, and that is the case because he wants to get that princess back into the graveyard. Mark really burning through the fire monsters in his extract, but he had a plethora of them. Now he's going to use Snake Eyes Diabell Star to place Flamebird's Dragon from the graveyard in the spell and trap zone and special summon itself out to the main monster zone. And he still has the two non link monsters needed to summon IP Mascarena. I don't know if I've ever seen this board state before, but you know, having to play through Nibiru and Druid Storm, you have to be able to adapt on the fly and find a, a still a strong board at that, because the, the way to deal with IP is to go to battle phase, but he has the World Sea Dragon's Lantis co-linked with the Nightmare Phoenix, so if he tries to go to battle, he can destroy monsters at the any point in the battle phase. Exactly, and he still has the Flame Bridge in the Spell and Trap Zone, so he didn't even lose access to it because of the Divine Temple, so anytime Ruben would summon a monster, he can push up that Flame Bridge, and then still has access to a powerful little knight while also getting back all the advantage from your graveyard. Beautiful play here for Mark Solis. Yeah, it's a really smart field, smart line of play, and it's not something you usually see because you associate these cards with finishing the duel on turn three or beyond. Indeed. Let's see what he got off of that draw from Wanted Seeker of the Sinful Spoils. Just gonna be a pass back here. All right, Ruben draws to four cards in hand versus the Atlantis Nightmare Phoenix. IP Masquerina, the Divine Temple of Snake Eye, and a spell card version of Snake Eye's Flamberge Dragon. And he starts off with Fiendsmith and Graver. Oh, but there is an Ash Blossom to meet it. That was going to be one of the more powerful effects because it was going to demand answers immediately as soon as it hits the field alongside a Requiem. As he got the throne, he does. Nightmare Throne for Ruben. He baited out the Ash, and now he's free to either destroy or add from his deck. Probably going to destroy Spirit of you, Bell, if I had to guess. But I've been wrong before, but nope, this time I'm right. It is Spirit of Ubel being destroyed, so he's going to try and special summon a Ubel from the deck. And the faster that he could put up the Phantom Ubel, the faster that he could answer the IP Masquerina. Yeah, I'll... All right, since the monster was summoned, Divine Temple of the Snake Eye is going to allow Mark Solis to push forward that Snake Eye's Flame Burst Dragon into the main monster zone. All right, so now going into the Phantom of Ubel, which will likely force the princess in the graveyard. Um, doesn't seem to it. Normal summon Samsara D Lotus. You can tribute that off the field special summon a U Bell monster from the deck. <gasps> Trying to find that other copy of Spirit of U Bell. Okay. Found it. Yep. Now he's gonna use the effect to set nightmare pain from the deck. is activated, he's going to be able to use its effect here. It looks like Mark has no responses. He needs to force out the Phantom of Ubel at some point if he wants to get the value out of his IP Mascarina. Very tense duel, so much on the line. What you I have to like remind myself to breathe every mm -hmm. few seconds while I'm watching this. Yeah, so it feels like we're so invested, we're just kind of watching, we forget to talk about it a little bit. Mark Sully's taking a moment to figure out if this is where he wants to try and use his Flame Birds Dragon effect or the IP Mascarena. I wish I could hear their internal monologues right now. Oh, his IP that is going to start yeah just like the anime kind exactly. of exactly that's like a key part of the anime is those internal monologues but phantom ubel is going to chain link two to ip mascarina to change the effect to destroy ubel from the deck looks like he's thinking about destroying spirit of ubel again 
Yep, that's gonna be Spirit of You Battle destroyed. Let's see if he has another monster to summon off of it. Doesn't look like it. So he'll reveal Gruesome Grave Scorn and she'll summon that from the hand and destroys you, Bell. And now he's gonna use you, Bell's effect. Special summoning the Terra Incarnate. Now, I haven't seen an Ultimate Nightmare the entire weekend, but this could be a. If you can take this Terra Incarnate off the field and have it summon nothing in return, that could be huge. Well, I think that's why he's been holding Nightmare Throws effect, right? Right. That's right, he hasn't used it yet. Okay. He's been saving it for this princess that he knows is lurking in Mark's graveyard. Yeah, he's trying his best, but there's still plenty of interaction here from Mark's side of things. The Zealantis is really troublesome just sitting there on the field. Yeah, you can't go straight into the battle phase now. Not that the IPM screen is much more of a threat. Uh, yep, he might be considering Princess here. Yama on summon will activate the effect to add it an unchained monster. It's gonna be that Shivara. Farah ends up in Ruben's hand here. Just the soul Lord Yama so far. He has the ability to use the Gruesome Swarmer. But before that, another Phantom Yubel. Yeah, you, oh man, you'd think that he wanted to maybe get that Princess effect out before another Phantom touched down. The fact the Phantom is once per turn, right? To negate? Or to switch the effect? No, I don't think is it. It might be, yeah, it might actually be. You, you can summon multiple return, but yeah. the effect is only once per turn. That's right, because you have to use infinite permanence when they have two. So he'll be okay. He's just going to use it as a material. Or it doesn't target. Yeah, yeah you're good. Yep, banishes Gruesome Grave Squirmer to special summon back Spirit of you, Bell. Shavara is going to go after that Spirit of you, Bell. Nightmare Thrones effect has not been used. Now it will be, so he's going to be able to set the trap from the deck and special summon a U-Bell of a different level from Sphere to U-Bell. One up or one down, and it is going to be the Terror Incarnate yet again. The Terror Incarnate from the Nightmare Throne and then from the Sphere to U-Bell back to the U-Bell that was shuffled into the deck earlier? Yep, from the Graveyard. Luckily, Sphere to U-Bell can summon from anywhere. Ruben finding a way here. Gonna make Anguish. Anguish will let him use one of Mark's monsters as a material. Yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier. Ruben's deck plays a lot of these cards that are not typically in the extra deck, I mean, choosing to have more utility going second than utility going first. You have to do something yeah, about this. Now we're like. here. I don't think Mark was prepared for this. He would never expect Anguish in the Ubel strategy. Is going to resolve. Limber's going to be able to add back or summon back multiple level ones from the graveyard, but Anguish is also going to be able to add back one of those fiends. I'm going to go and the princess Anguish. being co linked with the Zelantis means now there are three monsters that are co linked, yeah. so there'll be more cards that can destroy during the battle phase potentially. Okay. Ruben's going to use Yama's effect to banish itself from the graveyard since the card is destroyed and summon back a fiend. Anguish put back one of those Phantom U Bells. Oak and Poplar come from the graveyard to the field thanks to Snake Eyes, Flamber's Dragon. Anguish comes back thanks to Yama. Expertly played here from Ruben. He's played into many Snake Eye fields up to this point. He knows what he's looking for. Oak's going to add Snake Eye Ash from the hand. And wouldn't you know it, the original Sinful Spoils is on the bottom where he put it. Yep, this is looking... Good for Ruben. He's going to link away the Zelantis for Axis Code Talker. Targeting his anguish, so it's going to gain 3,000 attack. Dude, that, that's a lot of you bells with a lot of nightmare pain. He's going to attack into the Promethean Princess. The damage is reflected. The damage is reflected. The damage is reflected. And that's it. Ruben wins your 2024 TCG slash OCG Yu-Gi-Oh! World Champion 